Hi everybody, I'm Scott and this is the Dell Precision 7865. And if you're familiar with the Dell product line, the five at the end means it has an AMD CPU, which is pretty unusual for Dell, unfortunately. And it's not just any AMD CPU, it's a Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5995WX, which is the 64 core version, 128 logical threads. This is the first new computer I've gotten quite a while. Um, obviously not the like first computer I've gotten in a while, but mostly everything I buy is off eBay, comes used. In fact, my current workstation is a Precision 7920, or maybe 7910, uh, E52697V3, dual CPU, so total 28 cores. It's no slouch, but I mean, those CPUs are way old by now, and um, the machine's just not quite running like it should. And mostly that's because of the Windows install. And it's like, I could spend a lot of time cleaning it up. The Windows install, I think, dates back to like, well, Windows 7 for sure. It's been upgraded to Windows 10. But uh, yeah, it probably dates back to like 20-something. I'll put it on screen. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, after so many years, Windows just sort of accumulates crap and could use a little bit of a refresh. I could install a fresh version of Windows in that machine, but if I'm going to start from scratch from my desktop environment, might as well start with an upgraded computer as well, hence this guy. I don't usually buy pre-made computers uh, from the manufacturer. Like I said, either used or I've built a couple of computers recently, uh, one Intel, one AMD. But the reason for this one is that the entire machine costs about the same as just the CPU if I were to buy it retail. So that's to say I got a pretty good deal on the system, like basically I Pretty much just paid for the CPU and got an entire chassis, power supply. I'm not going to end up using the RAM or the SSD that's in here, although I can use, I'll use them in other systems probably. But um, at the very least, for including a decent quality chassis, it's it's worth it in my opinion. I figure worst case, if this chassis doesn't work out for me, um, I can use the CPU with a motherboard that I don't have to buy, a case I I then have to buy, and so forth, and it would get a lot more expensive. So. I'm kind of hoping I can make do with this because this is pretty much the fastest CPU I can afford. The reason it was so cheap is because Dell recently came out with the 70... The reason it was so cheap is because Dell recently came out with the eh, Precision 7875, which also has a Threadripper Pro, but it's the 7900 series, which, oh my God, Dell, shut the f up. Um, but you can see this starts at about what I paid for the 7865, but this is only with a 12 core processor. If I wanted to upgrade this to the 64 core version, well, that's an, an extra $11,000. And there we get up to 16,800. And if I want to go max it out, the 96 core version, we're talking a whopping $22,000 for this machine, which is pretty much, I think the same chassis that I got here. So we'll take a look at that. It looks like maybe a little bit different visually, but, um, I'm sure it's just an upgraded version. This is with a thousand watt power supply. So yeah, 22,000 is a little rich for my blood before any further upgrades. So hence this guy, the CPU is a little old. I'm making this video in 2023, at the very end of 2023. And the CPU was released in 2021. So it's already a couple years old, but I usually buy used old high end, like super high end hardware when it was new that I get for a, quite a reasonable price off eBay. This is actually the most expensive computer I think I've ever bought for myself, probably by a decent shot, even after upgrades. And this, of course, needs more upgrades because it only has 16 gigs of RAM, which is definitely not enough. It has a really low-end NVIDIA workstation graphics card, which was like one of the bare minimum ones that you could throw in there uh, without raising the price. So long story short, the reason for this video is let's see what upgrading this machine is like with consumer parts, particularly with consumer graphics cards, because this is meant to be used with the professional uh, workstation style graphics cards, which are usually way more expensive and not as performant as the consumer grade style. I mean, there's other advantages to buying them. That's why companies do buy them for support and stability, um, higher manufacturing defect rates or lower manufacturing defect rates, I should say. Um, generally just more stable and they're a little more conservative in order to achieve that stability as far as performance goes. So the huge issue is that this chassis is not very big. I mean, 
as precision workstations go, I mean, they make smaller ones, which are sort of like meant to be size optimized. This is sort of the size of a standard desktop tower. And like the 7920 series is substantially wider. And I think a little bit taller too. It'll hold a lot more PCIe cards. It'll hold more internal disks, uh, you know, 3.5 inch or 2.5. And it's just, they're just generally more robust systems. This is kind of, I mean, I don't want to say it's cheap. It's heavy. It feels well made. And I'm sure it is because honestly, I, I like the Dell Precision line. Um, that tends to be what I stick with. But let's take a look inside and uh, see how it stacks up on its internals. Of course, it's just a single lever to open the case. And it's not a key, it's just a simple screw latch. So it's not really for security. Maybe you could get this with a screw latch as not that screw. Uh... And here is what we get for our money. And I'm thinking, well, just like a car, it has this plastic shroud over the main bits that you'd be concerned with. Although, oh, interestingly, it does have a fan in there. It is an act active shroud in that sense. So the fan's just a separate module. Underneath, we have the CPU heatsink, of course, which is huge. I think this CPU has a 240 watt maximum power distribution uh, dissipation. Uh, eight RAM slots. This uses DDR4. Like I said, the CPU is a couple years old, so it's not up to the DDR5 spec, which is unfortunate. But again, for the price, I just couldn't resist. An NVIDIA T1000 graphics card, which is really small and cheap. This actually wasn't the minimum card that was spec'd with the computer if you ordered it just as is, basically. But, um, oh, it actually has a little protective film over the fan, which is kind of dumb. Because won't that throw the fan out of balance? Because it's got a little tab. Anyway, whatever. I think the default card this came with was an AMD card. I'm going to be putting an NVIDIA card in here. And I'm going to try to use this as a second graphics card just for a couple of secondary monitors. Uh, it's got four mini display ports. I think it has eight gigs of RAM, which isn't too bad. So obviously not for performance, but just for resolution, this will be able to power a couple of my other large high resolution screens with no problem, as long as I'm not using it for anything that requires performance. Uh, while we're in here, the other add-in card is a Thunderbolt card. I think it's Thunderbolt three. Wow, that does not want to come out. Okay, well, yeah, it's gonna to have to come out eventually. But anyway, it's got a display port loop through and two Thunderbolt ports, which are the USB-C style um, physical ports. So I'm probably not going to use this, but it was like a $20 add on and I figured maybe I'll use it. So just get it in case I probably won't have enough slots for it. And I'll show you what I mean shortly when we try to put the graphics card in here. And speaking of trying to put a graphics card in here, so you can see the inside pretty well. You can see my hands are coming out way overexposed. Um, sorry about that, but it's not very bright inside the chassis, and I want to make sure you can see what we're talking about here. And so here's the deal. Pretty much all workstation grade, professional grade graphics cards take up two slots. So they'll, cut, they'll be plugged into this slot electrically and physically, cover this slot, and then this slot would be free. You can plug the second graphics card in here and it would cover this slot, leaving the one in the middle as the only one accessible. Now, the problem is consumer graphics cards, as we all know, have gotten huge. I mean, they're bigger than some motherboards, right? At least with the fans and the shroud and everything around it. So the card that I got for this is going to take up 2.5 slots. So it'll take up this one, this one, and this one, I believe. And so it'll come out to about here which probably won't allow this slot to be used because that would cover up at least one of the fans in the graphics card. Not desirable for obvious reasons. I wish we could get like 40 eighties even, or even 40 seventies with squirrel cage fans, just like this one. Um, but they seem to have dropped that option from the consumer range, but almost all workstation cards are arranged like that. And the advantage of those is you can completely block the front of the card up to about like here where the fan would then be here. And also I like those better because they pull air through the card and out the back of the case, whereas consumer graphics cards, unless you have a uh, water block on them, tend to just throw air around the case and, re and rely on the case fans to push the air out. Anyway, 
that's enough of my rant there. Um, what I want to look at, though, is that Dill did thoughtfully provide a bunch of 8-pin power headers here. Four of them, as a matter of fact, and good cable management in that they plug into this plastic shroud in the front just to keep them out of the way. And they are wired through this wiring chase... And they have a decent amount of slack on them, too, so presumably they'll be able to reach wherever the graphics cards happen to plug in or happen to have their uh, power sockets. The main downside with this chassis is that if I get the old measuring tape and I measure from this slot out to here, you can see there's just about 30 and a half centimeters or just about one foot to this plastic piece here. So if your graphics card is longer than that, that might be a problem, although it can be a bit longer because this plastic piece can be removed. This is what holds the uh, GPU power supplies in, or GPU power connectors in. And otherwise, it doesn't really have much utility as far as I can see. It also has the cable guide here, but that's not technically needed. And also, I rather like the idea of taking it out because there's this giant fan in the front of the case pushing air across all the PCIe slots and I'm sure Dell designed this properly from a thermal standpoint and from an airflow standpoint but you can see the shroud does actually cover about almost half of the fan maybe just a little over a third and while it allows a decent amount of airflow less so if you have the connectors plugged in here and you can see there's a lot of plastic in the way so I don't know, just on my own terms, I would say omit this. Again, with workstation GPUs, um, they're going to be pulling air through the case for you, so it's less relevant that you have good airflow from that fan, but yeah, it just seems like a sensible thing to do to remove that. And then with that bracket removed, actually, let me just get these out of here because I'm going to be taking them out anyway when I upgrade this thing, just so they don't fall back into the case. And so with that plastic piece removed, you can see there's about 33 centimeters of clearance, 13 inches, between the uh, chassis and the fan. So that is the longest graphics card you could put in here, at least without removing the fan, which I wouldn't advise. And that presented a real conundrum for me because, as you can see, I looked at all these different video cards, well, and then some, um, and I was looking at their specs mostly the card dimensions and like you can see this one's 13.06 inches which should just about fit there but this is probably one of the 4080s i was looking at yeah all the 4090s i looked at were just too long so i ended up looking at 4080s um this one's a 90 and we can see the card dimensions are 348.2 millimeters and we have 330 millimeters or thereabouts to work with so this card would just not fit in the chassis and that was the case with all the 4090s I looked at. So 4090s just not compatible with this chassis. The other issue is 4090s currently priced around the $2,700, $2,800 mark. I mean, you could find them sometimes with deals a little bit cheaper, but not much. And then if we compare that to 4080s, they're selling more closer to the $1,500 mark. And I don't know, for that extra upgrade, some people are definitely going to find it worth it. Um, and I mean... I, it's an expensive system in the first place, so it's like, why not spend the extra money? I just can't bring myself to spend an extra roughly $1,200 or more on that upgrade from a 4080 to a 4090. You know, it's not that big of an upgrade, but to spend almost double the price of the card over again just for that small incremental increase, I'm going to stick with a 4080. And not just any 4080. This one in particular which I believe should fit the chassis based on its specs, though we will see for sure. The box kind of fits, so you'd think the card would fit, um, but we'll get to that very shortly. Obviously, this is a PNY, and um, yeah, nothing terribly exciting about it other than that. I mostly bought it for size, which I know is a weird reason to buy a graphics card, but again, my other option was 4090, new case, new PSU, um, new motherboard, and then pop this CPU into that other system. But then between the case, the motherboard, 
and a high wattage PSU, we're talking like another, I don't know, 1500 bucks or so, probably more. And um, yeah, and that's with the 4090s, then we're talking an extra $3,000 almost with the card upgrade and the motherboard and the fan um, and the PSU rather, and the fans for the case and the case itself. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna try to stick with this chassis. But like I said, the other main problem with this chassis, or rather with the motherboard specifically, is that it can really hold that graphics card. And then maybe I could put a card in this slot, maybe. And then it leaves one more slot free for sure. And by the way, these are both 16 lane and these are all eight lane. So it's a good motherboard in that sense that these are all, you know, very usable slots in theory, but in practice, not so much. This chassis is just too small, it's too tight. I don't like that aspect of it. It's not ideal, but it's kind of what I'm here working with. And there is one other card I absolutely need to put in this chassis, and that is this 10 gigabit fiber network card. Uh, it's an Intel, yeah, that. Um, and this is fresh from eBay. It's still sealed from the uh, seller, so let's hope it's genuine. It came from a reputable seller. I'm assuming it will be, because this chassis... And this is a bit embarrassing that we haven't looked at the back yet, so let's do that. I mean, honestly, when I'm looking at eBay photos, the very first thing I look for is the back of a computer, because you can kind of see how dusty it is, how dented it is, and of course, what adding cards it might have, and what other ports it might have. So as you can see, this is actually stubbed out for PS2 and serial. I didn't see those options when I bought it, but... Uh, and it actually has one gigabit and 10 gigabit ethernet ports, but obviously these are RJ45s. This is for copper. Um, and unfortunately the only 10 gig ports I have on my switch are fiber. So yeah, need a fiber capable card to go in here with an SFP. And indeed that's what we'll do. Um, otherwise, nothing very interesting. Three USB-C ports, I think USB 3.2 and USB type A is also 3.2 audio out and the power connector is the only unusual thing here i mean some of you are familiar, will be familiar with this but uh that is the power connector and a standard shall we say computer power cable connector looks like this and that's what that looks like and so just for your reference if you're not familiar with it that is an iec c19 power connector and it's just generally chunkier squared off and has all the pins in this horizontal orientation. And so here's the C19, the uh, mating connector is called the C20. And the main issue here is that it has a current carrying capacity of 16 amps. If we go back up to the connector we're all familiar with, the C13, which is the standard sort of computer style power supply connector, and it's mating C14, which would be on the power supply, which looks like this, you can see its max rated amps is 10. And for this system, that's an issue because I upgraded this to a 1350 watt power supply, whereas by default, it comes with a 1000 watt power supply and a standard 10 amp connector. And just for your reference, 1350 watts divided by 120 volts is 11.25 amps, which is why this power supply could not be used with a C13 or rather C14 power connector because it technically would go over that specification. I believe I've seen power supplies with a C14 connector that go over the allowed, like uh, that are even 1500 watts, but technically that wouldn't be allowed. Of course, Dell is a large reputable manufacturer, so they're going to stick with uh, the specifications. So, and of course, you know, this kind of power connector can be inconvenient for some people because if you don't have a lot of these spare cables lying around, you got to use the one that Dell sends you, which, you know, this one's pretty long. I think it's 10 foot. But uh, the other issue is if you were to use a standard C13 style connector, most of those power cables have a really small wire gauge. Like this one looks nice and thick. It looks chunky, but this is 18 gauge or... 0.824 square millimeters for the conductor sizes. So this is not very robust. I wouldn't want to plug this into a uh, high wattage power supply, but this cable should be quite a bit thicker. And yeah, indeed, this is 
14 gauge or well it doesn't give it in square millimeter oh it does or 2.08 millimeters squared and this at least in the north american market a 14 gauge cable would be rated for 15 amps so 11 point whatever amps it was will be well within the current carrying capacity of this cable so you do have to watch out for that and you got to watch out for that in general like you see a standard computer power cable with the standard connector you think oh well if i could plug it in surely it'll work fine but some of these cables are very cheaply made they might even have aluminum conductors they might be very tiny conductors they may be lying about the size of the conductors on the cable sheath so if you're ever dealing with a high wattage load even if it has a c14 power connector please please use high quality power cables in your uh high performance desktop systems because your uh, fire alarms will thank you. And before I upgrade it, let's look at the front. Uh, that would be important to show you, I suppose. I'm gonna look in the monitor to see where my hands are. It's got two flex bays, which in this case, just hold basic drive sleds. These are the configurable kind where you can put a 3.5 inch drive in here. If you just lower this, this folds out of the way or it gets removed. And um, yeah, these pins, you basically bend it sideways slot the drive into these pins and then bend it in and it'll hold either a 2.5 inch drive using moving these blue pins to this location and this location and then moving this one over to here and i think this one to here as well anyway you can reconfigure all these to hold a 2.5 inch disc or a 3.5 inch i was a little disappointed actually i wasn't familiar with their flex bays but I it was disappointing because inside of the chassis is just a sas connector which will hold, which will handle SAS and SATA physically and electrically, I suppose. Um, I was hoping it would be some kind of like PCIe extension, because one thing I got off of eBay were some used NVMe flex bay caddies, so you could plug an NVMe drive into these uh, front bays. But um, yeah, unfortunately, I guess you wouldn't get better than SAS rate speeds at best. Although it might be, it might end up being SATA. I don't know. Something to test out in the future. Aside from that, we've got the power button, a headphones button, and then USB type A, USB type A, two USB A's and two USB C ports. Um, also USB 3.2. Uh, it's just the, uh... And also I just took this off because uh, something goes in here as well. I think maybe just a slot load ROM drive or a, uh, you know, one of those like laptop style pop out tray optical media drives. I don't really care because this thing's going to be buried in, that, in my desk anyway. And, oh yeah, that's another thing. I mean, I know a lot of people are into pimping out their uh, computer cases, which is cool as hell sometimes. Like, a lot of those look really awesome. The thing for me is I don't care. This looks pretty basic because I have an old school computer desk, which was originally designed for CRT monitors, but works really well with my setup. And this is going to be buried right there in the middle under the desk. So, I, you know, I'm never going to see this. I mean, like, unless I'm going under my desk to find a dropped screw, I'll never, ever see this thing. So, uh, yeah, it could look like complete ass, and I don't care. Not to say I don't like cool-looking computer cases, but uh, that's just my situation. Now, what I have been dying to find out is will that 4080 that I bought actually fit in here? Because sometimes, you know, tolerances can be a little tighter than you think. And, um, yeah, well, let's see. Uh, I guess might as well do a really quick unboxing. But, yeah, there's really not much in the way of unboxing when it comes to graphics cards. Because it's just right there. And, I mean, god damn, this thing is huge. With the power splitter. Some paperwork. Oh, a... Uh, support bracket which probably won't be usable in this chassis but i did buy my own amazon sort of generic ass uh, support bracket to keep this from completely bending downwards in the chassis and ruining everything and i mean graphics cards are just preposterously huge nowadays i mean it's like this is a workstation chassis and this thing is uh even big compared to it but anyway let me take off the card edge protector get that out of the way and yeah let's just before i take off the protective film 
Let's just see if it actually fits. Ooh, that's tight. Holy crap. I mean, the back just barely clears it. I mean, see, that's what I mean about having to actually test it. You can measure it all you want, but then, like, I wouldn't have thought to measure how far back the card went from the slot in order to see if it hit this uh, fan cage here. But, okay. And I can't even tell if the card is... Let me just at least secure it a little bit. Yeah, the card is seated. Yeah, I mean, the card's so big I couldn't even tell if it was seated just by doing that. You can also see the card is basically... Let me sure I'm focused down there. The card is basically touching this plastic bracket for the uh, shroud. And actually, is the shroud going to fit in next to that? Oh, yeah. Okay, that should be fine. Cool. Because the shroud's inset from the graphics card. Wow, but it just barely clears in the back. I mean, there is virtually no space. As the measurement said, there should barely be any space right there. And unfortunately, the graphics card itself is blocking a significant portion of this fan, which is kind of stupid. And I misspoke before, this card is 3.5 slots wide. So it is actually covering all but one expansion slot, all but one PCIe slot. And at least until I upgrade my network switch, that is going to have to be taken up by the network interface card, um, which is kind of unfortunate because that means I'm not going to be able to use this cheap uh, NVIDIA card for my other monitors. Now this will, this GPU does have mm, three display ports and one HDMI port. I have five monitors. So in theory, I could connect four of them to this card. And then the fifth one, which is tiny anyway, I could just connect via a USB-C to actually VGA because it's old and it's small. It's, it's, it's this one. I use it for Winamp and videos primarily. And then, okay, so the other thing is I am going to need to use this cable because maybe this is just me not never having a... Uh, 40 series card, but um, this uses a much smaller form factor like Molex style connector, which is actually very unfortunate because as you can see, if I turn the computer up, and of course it's unwise to do this without the video card being supported in the front, but yeah, I'm not gonna be able to close the case with this in the way. So I'm gonna have to get a right angle for this. And even then, I don't know if it'll clear because, like, there's really not that much space between the card and the case. I mean, the card and the case cover. So to test this today, I'm going to have to run this with the cover open. I mean, that's the only option here, right? Yeah, I didn't realize the card would come with it. So, right, I actually bought a <laughs> the identical sort of connector, adapter, splitter, whatever. It's actually a reverse splitter, I guess. But, yeah, it's the right style of connector. This one goes to two eight pin female ports and this one two three um you could probably get away with two i don't know but uh yes yeah, so this one actually would be a lot more flexible but I, I still don't think it would flex enough to get the case closed and this one and i believe this one i got worrying about clearance and this should have a right angle connector oh it is the right oh i was one step ahead of myself it is the right style of connector. Okay. Um, I was hoping it would go this way, but it actually is oriented this way. But that's okay, because I got plenty of uh, cable length here to work with. But I still think that might be too fat for the case to close. Mm. I mean, that's like at the height of the case cover. So here's what we're going to do. Not, not even going to bother connecting it yet. I'm just going to tuck these cables out of the way, grab the case cover, and nope. Oh, you got to be kidding me. This middle piece that sticks out right here, which is called the PCIe holder, <laughs> pretty 
yeah, that is pretty ironic. That bracket is called the PCIe holder, which uh, I'm sure would hold PCIe cards. It probably, you know, has a plastic, plastic things that would stick out and hold the cards. I think it would close without this in place. Now it just looks like it's spot welded in a few locations, so I can probably break that off. Because the irony is the PCIe holder is actually preventing me from using the PCIe slot. That's that's just brilliant. I mean, it's not Dell's fault. I can't badmouth them for that. Uh, because, you know, you're not supposed to use consumer graphics cards in this in this machine. But uh, it's just a shame like that they really don't want you to. Oh, actually, uh, I didn't realize. No, this piece of metal here, the PCIe holder is hitting the power connector before it can even close far enough for this piece, which is labeled the NV link holder, which will then probably impact the card itself. It might just clear it, but I don't know. Um, so before I start trying to remove those things, let's see if the case closes without the power connector. Oh, okay, phew, it does clear it. Okay, that is actually awesome news. I mean, it must be, I mean, I'm not gonna be able to get a camera in there, but like there has to be less than a millimeter be between this, well, and now this. That one's a little higher, actually. The NV link holder is a little higher. Yeah, there's gotta be less than a millimeter of clearance between that and the top of the card. I mean, it's super tight, but yeah. So, okay, if I can remove this with a bit of force, then maybe it'll close on top of that power connector. All right, you guys all know the famous saying, the wrong tool for the wrong job. Um, you know, don't try this at home. Uh, I'm kind of hoping this is like poorly attached, but I kind of doubt it because it's probably a really well-made chassis. Because sometimes, I mean, if it's bad, spot welding you can just pop it off with a little bit of effort but um i also don't want to bend the whole case mm, which i'm gonna do a few fucking later okay so i'm here at the other side of the basement using my cell phone much less professional next to the washing machine and the utility sink and boiler and this is just a random set of metric drill bits that I have that I don't care if I ruin. They're not metal bits specifically, but um, yeah, I'm going to use a small one just trying to get those spot welds drilled out, hopefully not penetrating through the other side of the case. So uh, yeah, let's see how that goes. Now, obviously I'm doing it over the sink so I can just brush any metal dust and the shavings into the sink and uh, make it the drains problem. So. Fortunately, these, these drill bits have a very sharp point. So it should fit into that spot weld and sort of hold it in place. I should probably use some lubricant. Um, actually, maybe even a smaller drill bit. Like, why am I trying to push that hard through it? All right, so yeah, I'm gonna use this uh, smaller bit. There's the comparative size. And hopefully it'll just be enough to break the spot weld. I just really don't want to go through this side of the case, obviously. Let's, oh yeah, there we go. Movement. Okay, so that, that spot weld is defeated. So this tiny drill bit should do the trick. It's kind of good, I guess, that these aren't real metal cutting bits and they're kind of dull. Oh, there we go. That just popped. Yep. I got just far enough to loosen that up. All right, so that side is all drilled out, and that's moving. And then I drilled these just enough. I'm hoping I can just lift this and it'll sort of pop off. Nope. Okay, not there yet. Aha! There we go. My only other piece of advice when doing this sort of thing, which, you know, I've actually done 
in one form or another on a few occasions is you want to make sure all the metal dust is gone from whatever you're putting back on your computer uh, for obvious reasons. I mean, even just one tiny speck of metal particulate in a PCIe slot, for example, could short something out and uh, really make things unpleasant for you and be nearly impossible to debug because you're almost probably never going to see it and you're just going to think the motherboard's dead or could short out any other connector or tracks or some other thing. So I'm going to give this a full wipe down because also that, that uh, those metal particulates, especially when that thing snapped off, could have flown, you know, over here, over here, you know, it could be under here. So I'm also going to give this a good shake out over the sink and just try to make sure I dislodge everything and then give it a real good wipe down, obviously with just a damp cloth with water. And um, yeah, again, and obviously you don't want to do this over or anywhere near the actual electronics because you could end up brushing metal particulates into it. Anyway, you got the idea. So let me do that and we'll get back to the bench. Okay, and we're back. And by the way, I mean, metal particulates are no joke. I mean, the shavings from that drilling. Uh, I also wiped off the other side of the case cover because sometimes they can become magnetic as they're churned around and stick to metal. You know, some could get on the underside. Um, I also rinsed off my hands to make sure I didn't have any metal dust or particulates on my hands. And I checked my clothes because, you know, if I uh, move my shirt around over the computer and some metal falls in there, not good either. So should be pretty good as far as that goes. Now, just because I removed that does not mean that this connector will still clear the side of the case. This connector may be a little too tall, but at least now it should be, if it's close, it might be solvable and that I could get a different brand or different model of this connector and hopefully it'll fit. So, oh, yeah, and it looks like there's a little bit of flexibility there. So it's not actually touching the connector. Perfect. Okay, so that was a little bit more of a uh, faff than I was hoping it would be. But now at least it looks like this graphics card should be usable. Got to get your hand, your finger like deep in there to unlatch the connector, but cool. Oop. Oh, it doesn't have, <laughs> it doesn't have a latch. I'm, I'm an idiot. Um, it's just the card's so tight in there. And I mean, I say card, but this is like the actual PCB of this graphics card is that big. It extends to where my two fingers are. The rest of this is all heat sink. Like from here out is all heat sink. And, you know, of course, uh, cage and fan, of course. Like the actual graphics card itself is pretty small. And I should uh, discuss the elephant in the room. Obviously, I could water cool this. Um, there is a, I was eyeing this 4090, which is actually, oh, $2,200. That's actually a decent price, um, at least compared to what it was. And uh, obviously, this would be a decent solution because it's physically a lot smaller for the card. But it's like, where am I going to put the radiator on this chassis? There's, there's just really no practical place to put a radiator other than on the outside of the chassis or like really jerry-rigged in there. And um, I didn't want to go that route. I know it's going to be disappointing and even inane to some people, but... Uh... But there you have it. Nice big fat graphics card. The other concern is that this this card will be almost completely obscuring these two heat sinks. Uh, one of which I actually need to access before I put the graphics card in. And so that's not necessarily great, although the graphics card itself might draw air past those because the heat sink is uh, the fins are oriented this way vertically when it's in the chassis. And so that should be moving air across these two heat sinks under there, hopefully. Put the graphics card out of the way and let's talk about another upgrade that's going to be done to this machine. It comes, I think, with a 256 gig low performance SSD. And what I'm going to be putting into it instead are two Western Digital Black SN850X NVMEs, four terabytes a piece, because this has two NVME slots under 
this, uh, I say slot, connector, whatever, um, under this heat sink. Ooh, they are captive screws at least. And it even has uh, thermal pads on it, which is nice. And it should squeeze the SSDs nicely between this heat sink and other thermal pads below them. Oh my God, this is a really tiny SSD. I mean, it's gonna like have what, one flash chip? Oh, that's so cute. If you can make it out, those are the markings. 256 gig right up there. And yeah, very tiny. And then I'm gonna to have to move this stand off because these are gonna be full length form factor. And then as far as unboxings go, um, yeah, NVMe SSDs, not all that exciting. We already know the specs, but you can see the size of it. It's got two flash chips in the back, uh, two flash chips in the front, and then a controller chip up here. Now, at the time of making this video, I could not get eight TB versions of these. But I'm assuming you could fit eight terabytes in this form factor in today's technology because, uh, well, why wouldn't you? I mean, there's only two chips on this, on each side, I mean. And you could fit four on each side, I believe. I actually don't know why I'm screw I need to screw this down because the, um, you know what? Okay, there's an issue here. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, this is going to seem bizarre, but I'm not going to screw the SSD in. Unless that's going to conform. Because here's the problem. It has this big fat thermal transfer pad underneath it. And the problem is the pad, in order to get contact with the underside of the SSD, is thicker than it needs to be. Because it'll compress down. The problem is that with the SSD secured in the connector and, on, and by that screw, it's being secured at both ends and the middle is getting pushed up by that pad. And so I could see the uh, card visibly bowing. You know, it's supposed to be straight. It was going like this. It was bending up in the middle. And that's not good. I mean, uh, one of these VGA mount chips could just pop right off of there, right? So I figure I'm not gonna screw it down it's going to be squeezed between these thermal pads, right? You can see where the other SSD put an indent in that one. In theory, I should get a new pad, but I think we'll be okay. And the other, the ones down there are a lot thicker. They're about three times as thick as these pads. So once the SSDs are squeezed between this heat sink module and, and the lower heat transfer pads, these, SSD, these SSDs aren't going anywhere. So I'm not going to screw them down right now. I'm not going to screw them down at all, actually, because this will hold them in place. And when I tighten this down, it'll ensure there's even pressure along the whole length of the SSD. And it's not like they'll be able to slide out of position or out of shape or anything. Look, I don't know. I suppose I can't really recommend you don't screw these down because... Uh, I'm sure it's not the manufacturer recommended way to do this, but um, and I'm just trying to get those screws lined up because I, if I align the screws wrong and then I need to pull the heat sink this way, it might pull those connectors out. So I'm just trying to get this as lined up as possible so that it can go straight down, clamp down those SSDs without moving them and everything should be happy. Okay, now sort of like tightening down the lug nuts on a uh, car tire. Well, I didn't quite do a star pattern. Like you really, you really should do diagonal sides, tighten them down a little bit, just catch the threads, then catch the threads, then tighten a little, then tighten a little, tighten a little, tighten a little. And basically I went around tightening each screw a little bit at a time just to provide even downward pressure on those pads because they did deform quite a bit. I mean, you can see that one starting to stick out on the side there where it's squashed down. And... Um, it took a decent amount of force to get them down there. And you can see the edges of the connectors right there. It doesn't look like these shifted at all during the process. And those are not going anywhere, even without 
the uh, screws holding the actual cards down. Those are definitely not not going to just pop out or leave the case somehow. So I'm quite satisfied with that. I mean, those are really well squashed in there. Okay, so that is the SSD upgrade accomplished. Now, I guess before I put the uh, graphics card in, let us upgrade the RAM, because as I said, this came with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is not nearly enough for my taste. Dim socket levers were really tight. Ooh, those are some tiny chips. But yeah, it is, these are eight gigabyte uh, DDR4 PC3200 AARD. Um, yeah, nothing too fancy. I think this system does use ECC RAM though. Or at least I hope it does because that is what I bought from Newegg. Um, this was super micro branded RAM but it was just a good price and it should work with this system. I mean, it's a uh, standard specifications. I just hope Supermicro didn't do something weird. Oh, well, they weren't shy about the packaging and the efficiency thereof. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this system has eight dim sockets, as we can see, and I will be making use of all of them. And then this is the mo this is the craziest packaging I've ever seen. Ram coming. Yeah. See, this is this is more what I was expecting. Just eight of these, not eight padded boxes. But hey, when I order Ram, I guess I want it to arrive in good condition. Um, yeah, it's branded Super Micro. It's made by Samsung. So yeah, 64 gig PC4 3200 AA. Just the same as the other sticks, except obviously four times the size. And with eight of these, that's going to be 512 gigs in this modest little system. And okay, that is for sure overkill, even for me. But my feeling was, I mean, the RAM compared to the system wasn't that expensive. And I was going to go with at least 256 gig because I have 192 gig in my current system. And so it's like by the time getting 256 gig, I might as well populate all the sockets and not have to upgrade this beast in the future. So that was my logic. Obviously, this should be a physical match for the system because it's just DDR4 PC4 3200 AA. So now just the uh, moderately tedious process of unboxing all this RAM and then having to deal with the waste of all those boxes. These are not a waste though, because these I tend to hold on to because, well, first of all, I'll put the two modules that came out of this system into one of those. And second of all, it seems like I always have RAM laying around that I need to store. So as Plinkett would say, cue the music, Johnny. That wasn't a good Plinkett imitation. Cue the music, Johnny. No. Oh, yeah. Johnny was captured by white slavers. And there we go. Okay. Now, in case you're wondering why I didn't order this system with 512 gigs of RAM, well, that's because, uh, let's just say it wouldn't be cheap. Actually, I'm kind of curious about how much more it would have cost, but uh, so this is the 7865 configuration, utility, wizard, whatever they call it. And let's see. <laughs> okay, that's for 4 times 128 gig. This is for 8 times 64, which is what I got. And, oh, we can get it with up to a terabyte. But, uh, yeah, $7,500. I'm pretty sure from Newegg, I spent $1,200 on this RAM. So I would absolutely never, I never ever upgrade RAM from Dell. I always do it myself post facto. So much more expensive than upgrading it yourself. Now, of course, for businesses, for enterprises, the type of people who are ordering these types of systems usually, you know, yeah, it's worth it for them. It's easier, I guess. And more, you know, reliable. Like 
in theory, if I ever want to, if I ever need to do a warranty return on this machine, I'm gonna have to pop this RAM back in there. And I guess maybe hope that Dell hasn't seen this video. All I think they'll honor a warranty if you just upgrade the RAM, right? They have to, right? At least I would hope they would. All right, so the only other piece de resistance is the network card. And of course, I still didn't bring a friggin' knife over here, but who needs a knife when you got a screwdriver? Come on, random eBay seller, please be reliable. Let's see what this is. Nice. Well, I haven't checked the model number, but it looks nice. Okay, so it's an Intel E810XXVDA2. Data manufacturer 5 2022, so it's pretty new. And as you can see, it is a two port card and I already have SFPs for it. So I didn't get it with SFPs. This wasn't that expensive and um, yeah, I don't need two ports, but it was actually cheaper than a single port uh, version. And the reason I got this is I have, I have um, plenty of 10 gigabit fiber ether cards, but they are all unfortunately PCIe gen two or three. And this is a Gen 4 card, as is, of course, the bus here. Yeah, in order to take advantage of the full speed of this bus and not throttle the bus down to a lower speed, I wanted to get the appropriate card for it. And we can only hope there's enough airflow over that heatsink. But, uh, yeah, that will be a test for the gods. I am Sturculius, god of feces. Okay, so it's pretty much just going to be the network card and the massive ass graphics card that takes up half the chassis. Okay. Oh, actually, I am going to need one of these brackets. I was hoping to be able to fit another card in here, but I forgot this was three and a half slots wide, not two and a half slots wide. So that sucks. Okay, then the only other thing I'm going to have to do is this uh, chassis actually has mounting feet on the bottom. You can see it doesn't want to move from the table. So you can just leave this flat on your desk, which, you know, is good for graphics cards like this. But the real problem is when I turn this up vertically, which I'm going to do, this end of the graphics card is still pretty heavy and it's going to start sagging. The only thing holding this end of the graphics card from sagging is the PCIe slot because it's basically like pivoting here and trying to pivot downwards and the PCIe slots the only thing holding in place. I actually got a computer a couple of years ago. I think it had, I think I bought the computer just because at the time it had a 3070 or 3080 in it. And again, it was a situation where the computer was on uh, Woot and it was priced such that the computer with the graphics card was actually the same price as just getting that graphics card retail at the time. So I figured, it's basically a graphics card with a free computer attached. So that's what I did. But that thing had been in storage for a little while and possibly from being banged around and shipping. The graphics card had sagged so much, it actually bent the PCIe slot a little bit. And um, it didn't cause any electrical problems on the motherboard somehow or mechanical problems. All right, well, believe it or not, I cannot find the tiny little box that has the graphics card support brackets that I bought from Amazon. So that's okay. For now, I want to just close up the computer, test it, make sure it works. And then uh, I'll, those will turn up and it's just basically a little magnetic thing that sticks to the bottom of the case and then is a pole that's adjustable and can just go under the graphics card here at the end and that'll just support it. So yeah, let's get the GPU cabled up. Now, I don't necessarily wanna tuck these wires down here because they, will impede airflow a little bit and possibly foul those fans. So I'm going to route them up over the uh, graphics card. And if it'll do a nice enough bend radius, hmm, maybe not. I was going to say maybe tuck them into this uh, drive bay to keep them out of the way. Because unfortunately, cable management sort of becomes an issue here too, because this chassis wasn't really designed for this size card. So you know what I'm going to do here? Let's pop this drive bay or this drive caddy out and then tuck. Yeah, once I close the case, that'll sort of sandwich these two connectors right here. And then the cables do a nice run around there into the connector. 
and bada bing bada boom. I should note, and it's kind of uh, perhaps a bit late in the game for this, but there are two large fans in the back of the chassis as well as the one in the front up here. And as earlier noted, there is a fan here. And I should tell you that, let me just uh, throw this approximately where it goes just to show you how it all lines up. So the shroud is like this and the shroud appears to actually do quite a lot. So it's kind of upside down reversed obviously now, but you can see there's a channel here that comes out the side. And then there's this main channel in the middle. That's where the CPU heatsink goes. And then that connects out over here. And then there's another channel here. There's this baffle and another air duct here. And that's what goes to this fan. And so basically these two channels cool the RAM and this channel cools the CPU and the CPU and RAM have these two fans drawing air through these channels. And I guess they just need a little extra cooling for this bank of RAM here because then this fan, which is oriented like that, like this fan is right here. It would sit about here in the chassis and that'll push additional air past this RAM. And it probably will also have the effect of drawing air across these drive bays, I'm guessing. Oh, is this not going to shut with these cables in place, though? Ah, uh, it's always something. Okay. And so my point being, this shroud is not decorative. It's not like, you know, I made fun of it before. It's not like the plastic cover on your car's engine, where it's pretty much useless. And just for show, that shroud actually does quite a lot as far as airflow routing goes. So I'm thinking what I got to do is sort of, this is going to be a little messier, but... I got to get these connectors sort of out of the way of the shroud, sort of obstructing the airflow of the front fan because they're all kind of jammed in there. I mean, maybe if I pull this farther along and can now, because this cable mass here is going to get in the way. And yeah, I think the only way to do that is going to be to bring them out and have them dive down here. It's not blocking up the fan too much. The cables aren't, and the connectors aren't actually up against the fan. They're kind of out a little bit. So we should still get decent airflow there. And then these cables can lay flat right across the top there. I know some of you are going to be screaming at me, like, because I'm not using zip ties. I'm not making this all neat and tidy. Uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is, I don't care. It's going to work. It's going to be fine. You see it's, it's bent up a little there. It does not like those cables being routed there. Okay. I mean, it closes, but it's, it's pinching the cable slightly, which I don't like. All right, so these are going to have to sort of go somewhere else out of the way. And there's really not much in the way of options as far as, uh, like, routing or storing these cables, I think. See, I can't go over this fan with these cables because that'll, that'll be a pinch point. I think I can maybe stash these next to the fan. Kind of a little pocket between the fan and the uh, drive bracket and whatever this is. And then that'll at least keep those connectors from flopping around. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help that I added all this extra length to these cables with this adapter. And once the shroud is in there, that's sort of going to lock all those cables into a little cubby area. Although we don't want to foul this fan either. Fortunately, that's got a cover... Uh, cage on it or a uh, protective screen on it whatever so yeah that should be fine that's not going to foul with any of these cables and then let's get those under there oh yeah that's fine um these are not really pinched they can move quite nicely there's nothing under there now what is it it's hitting something what the hell is it hitting oh Wait, this is going to clear it, but I didn't realize, see this thing here that sticks out? I do believe that's just touching the graphics card, so I might not need a uh, GPU stand. 
I think the cables were just getting in the way a little bit. Because this was closing before with the card in place. So that sort of pivots. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's like barely. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, that little notch is actually going to support the GPU. I hardly ever use this camera, but this is sort of the idea behind it is for reasons, is for situations like this. Okay, that little notch. See, it's kind of going right between GPU and the bottom of the case. When the case is closed in position, it should, it's just brushing the GPU and it should, I keep calling it the GPU, it's a graphics card really, but I mean, you know what I mean. It should just be to the side away from the fan. So yeah, I'm sorry, it's so tight in there. That's a pretty hard place to get a good shot, but um, yeah, see, it's so tight, like the case just won't close until Unless that notch sort of just shimmies into position. So, yeah. But case closes like a detective on Christmas. Even though it might not be right, the case is closed. I don't know if that made sense, but whatever. You know what I mean. Okay, well now I suppose the time has come to test this out. I'm going to plug this into HDMI. Oh, I just realized there's no operating system on this, so... We're basically just going to see the BIOS, huh? And, of course, the power connector. That drew so much power when it clicked on, even though it actually didn't turn the computer on. It just, like, charged the capacitors internally, but it caused lights to flicker. I don't know if you call it that. Power on. Oh. There we go. Okay. That is not the mouse. Okay, the amount of system memory has changed. Continue. Oh, actually, I meant BIOS setup. Continue is, is no OS on this machine right now. Continue is a dumb choice. Oh, by the way, I should note this is actually my second time trying to make this video. I got like a third of the way through it last time. Didn't realize my wireless mic died until much after and then kind of gave up on it. So I've already started up this computer and tested it with the original OS, which you can see right now as I'm talking. So that's how I'm familiar with some aspects of the computer in advance oh my god i gotta disable netboot this is it really waits this long to time out trying to boot up off the network yeah no shit all right finally it really likes taking its time um so there we go Bio bios version blah blah, blah. thread river pro 595 5995 wx 64 cores Max clock speed of 4.55 gigahertz. Cool. It's detecting all 512 gigs of RAM. That is nice. And now before I exit, um, I do have Ubuntu desktop 22.04 and a Windows 10 installer from that I wrote in 2023-02-24. So let's just boot it into Ubuntu, uh, the live image, so that we can just make sure this thing works. Did you hear that? This thing actually has an internal PC speaker, which is to say like a... Uh, you know what I mean? Not like a uh, buzzy 8-bit driven, you know, piezo PC speaker type deal. I mean, it's an actual speaker connected to the sound card or built-in sound chip, which I guess like you could say about a Commodore 64. You know what I mean? Actually, let's just load up Gparted so that we can see the uh, discs and make sure they're both detected. Well, let's just scale that up so that you guys can see, because otherwise, um, yeah. So, yeah, good. We see both SSDs there. I've only ever used, used Gparted in the, uh, on the command line, so I'm not familiar with that interface. <laughs> now that's what I like to see. Come on. 
<laughs> too many CPU cores to fit on the screen. I mean, of course, these are logical cores. It has 64 physical cores, but, you know, that's still cool. Oh, memory, 14 gig of 540 gig. I guess that includes swap. Well, anyway, that's still nice to see. Yeah, I mean, cool. Uh, dumb question, but does the live version of Ubuntu come with a, uh, like, stress test slash performance test type deal? it's getting late even for me because as we can see it's currently 5 20 in the morning and no i did not wake up to make this video i'm still up so all right i guess i'll be back with a uh more they'll shoot another day showing the computer with like drivers and shite installed and it working properly no you know what um I'm going to call this a wrap for this YouTube video, even though I would like to get Windows loaded on here, all the drivers, run some performance tests, and blah, blah, blah. I think I accomplished what I wanted to here, which was showing you that it is possible to put a RTX 4080 in this system, not a 4090, because every single 4090 I looked at would have been too long. This was just about the shortest 4080 I could even find. Upgraded to 512 gigs of RAM, upgraded to eight terabytes total of SSDs. And yeah, it is now a fairly complete system. Oh, and 10 gig uh, fiber network card. Can't forget that. That's kind of what I wanted to show. There's, there's plenty of other websites and videos about this exact system, but none of them really went into trying to use this from a gamer slash performance consumer standpoint. Because at the time this came out, spec like this with this CPU, this system probably would have cost fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, so it was well out of reach of anyone using this for home use, most likely. It's still a little on the pricey side. I'm like kind of a little nervous at having spent this much on a computer. It's the first time I've ever spent this much on a computer um, in total. Yeah, it should be a it should be a lot smoother, a lot faster, a lot nicer to use than my current system, and um, I'm kind of excited to get this in my desk and loaded up and working so uh thanks for watching i've been scott if you have any questions or observations or if i got anything wrong please post in the comments let me know follow me on social medias not for no reason but because if i remember and if i don't and you want to have more information you can uh you know tag me in a post or something trying to prompt me to upload some more information about this machine and how it's working performance wise like I'll run a couple of performance tests on it and uh oh my god i already did performance tests on this machine but i just did it without sound so yeah here's how it performed i should benchmark the whole system um as is right now anyway uh, like i said thanks for watching let me stop rambling and uh go to bed bye or whatever i'm always so fucking shitty at ending youtube videos Oh, and my leg fell asleep, like, completely. God damn. Whew. I can't even move it out from under me. 
Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> this is embarrassing. I'm sitting like cross-legged. Well, one leg's crossed under the other one, which is straight. I can't show you, but the leg that's underneath is completely asleep. And I can't. Oh, there we go. I couldn't even like move it out from under. Whatever. Good night. What's with the salute? Who salutes at the end of a YouTube video? <laughs> That's so stupid. Um, where's my slate? Uh, 